Our next conversation is going to still look at uh, impeachment and the politics versus the legal side of impeachment and what then this whole means in terms of we as the citizens are we getting our services. John Chikati is the Secretary General of Ford Kenya Party. Jamaya Simba. <laughs> he is also representing the people of Tongaren constituency in the National Assembly. He's our guest for the next one. Um, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Quite well, my brother. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Tumembiwa na wa Kenya, tuweche kuito watu wa Ishimewa, because you know, wewe ni mtumishi. Yes. Mm. Mtumishi wa watu. Kabisa. Karibu. Asante sana. Chama yiko imara? Chama ni imara kabisa. Yeah. Simba mara tatu. <laughs> Simba mara tatu. <laughs> yes. Why mara tatu? <laughs> Sisi usema Simba, Simba, Simba. Ah, <laughs> yes. <see>. Yeah. Siti, <laughs> did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah? <laughs> but it sounds good, though. Yeah. Simba. 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 <laughs> Ford Kenya. Yes. All right. So, uh, Karibu Sana. Siti, we'll welcome you with the day's proverb. Yes, we are in the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria. Mm -hmm. Okay? Patience is the key to paradise. Patience is, is the, the key, key to, paradise. to paradise. Yes, that yeah. is a proverb. Uh -huh. What do you think this proverb is telling us? Yes. What's, the, what's the interpretation of it? Uh, I mean, always uh, patience is, is, is a gateway mm. uh, to many things. Uh, it's telling us about um, really avoiding to hurry. Uh, decision making should be very careful. Uh, we as politicians... Uh, uh, not entering into uh, decisions and making decisions that you are not very sure of. Mm. So patience has always be, be, been beneficial uh, to those uh, uh, who mind uh, mm. the fact that uh, they should be slow mm. in, uh, in, in taking decisions in whatever direction. So take your time. Yes. Get through everything. Understand the ins, the outs, the pros, the cons. Weigh everything, the consequences, the likely benefits, the likely risks Correct. before you move. Yes. This is what basically you see this proverb is telling us. Yeah. Do you think a parliament does that? Uh, to some extent, yes. Mm. Uh, we've, uh, we, 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 we take um, time uh, to reflect on decisions we make. We take time to... Uh, to digest uh, issues uh, before making decisions. So, yes, at times we do. Probably at times we, we've made uh, things in a hurry, but at times we have done, we've, we've been patient mm. in making our decisions. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> You're here today so we can uh, look back at last week in the National Assembly. Yes. In the matter of the impeachment, the historic impeachment of the Deputy President. Um, as stipulated in the Constitution, brought to the National Assembly, members of Parliament um, spoke for an entire day about it and in the end took a vote. And many, 290, 280, 81, yeah. 81 yes. voted to impeach the Deputy President. Yeah. When you look back at what was uh, happening in Parliament on that day, do you think that um, members of Parliament were actually looking at considering all those things that you've said should be considered before a decision is made? The debate in Parliament on that day was based uh, on individual mm -hmm. decisions. Um, individuals had different reasons why uh, they took that decision. Mm -hmm. Personally, I had uh, uh, some uh, reasons which were not even among the, the 11 mm -hmm. uh, that were written. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, the deputy president is a classmate. We joined uh, with him in the University of Nairobi in 1985, mm. uh, in September. We left in 1988. <laughs> I have come to know him very well. Um, he joined the, the, the government as a DO, and then I joined the NGO sector. So we've had a long way, and uh, he's a person I know well. Mm. Uh, where I had a problem with him personally was... Uh, on this issue of uh, narrowing uh, the Kenya, uh, Kenya, Kenya as a country into a company. Uh, I didn't like that at all. I have personally had a discussion with him on that mm. and told him my dissatisfaction with uh, uh, consistently uh, airing out his view 
of Kenya as a shareholding estate. Mm. Uh, th that one was not good. In Parliament, I'm in the Budget Committee, and one of the things we are struggling with is the Stabilization and Equalization Fund mm. to ensure that all parts of Kenya are, are, are equal. Mm. Uh, we want to uplift even the marginalized areas, the dry areas like Trukana, Samburu, Marsabit, parts of the coast, and even parts of, 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 of Western Kenya and the lake region. And therefore, when someone comes and says, if we are not within the bracket of the shareholding, you are not part of this uh, system, and then uh, uh, some of us feel excluded. And, and we fear that if that person gets the leadership of the country, then the country will be in chaos. So personally, that was one of the reasons. And if you look at um, that, um, that narrative, uh, we forced him uh, to some extent to stop this shareholding debate. And then he started this debate of one shilling, one vote. One vote, one shilling, which is closely uh, uh, related with this uh, shareholding. And again, it was going to exclude a majority of, of the people. Then from there, uh, he stopped that and then he started this thing of, uh, of, Mount, Ge of Mount Kenya region, this thing of the mountain. And, and he has consistently been uh, doing that. He also failed to visit different parts of the country uh, to, to preach cohesiveness and, and unity. And therefore, those were my reasons uh, why I, I felt like, you know, we may be having a wrong person in top leadership. So, so every member of parliament mm. had his own mm. reasons. Mm. Yes. So not necessarily... So, so, so it was not a collective thinking. Okay. Yes. So for those reasons... In which part of the Constitution does do those reasons of yours lie? Is it a gross violation of the Constitution? Our Constitution uh, talks about cohesiveness. Hmm. Kenya is one nation. Uh, and any, uh, uh, any part of this country uh, is, uh, must, must be considered when it comes to... Uh, you see, once you are a president or a deputy president, hmm. you are... <coughs> you are bound by a collective responsibility of looking at the, uh, Kenya as one. Yeah. And therefore, once you, you become parochial at that level, then you, you don't deserve to be in that position. Yes. It is morally wrong. Mm. Yes. As a party, yes. because you're the Secretary General, clearly spokesman of uh, Ford Kenya. Yes. As a party that is part of the coalition that is ruling the country mm -hmm. have you raised this matter with your partners in uda because he's the deputy party leader of uda as a secretary general of the party i i have made a lot of consultations and um i have also written uh to his excellency the president about these remarks of uh, the deputy president uh to help uh <coughs> guide him so that his remarks should be uh remarks that uh, bring the nation together. Mm. This remarks of shareholding uh, w was actually bad. And you could see throughout the country that they were, not, um, uh, they were not in line with the thinking of many Kenyans, and people didn't like it. And therefore, uh, I have already written, I wrote to the head of state, mm. uh, expressing our dissatisfaction. How many times Kenya? did you write? Once. Uh, once. Mm -hmm. And I met also the deputy president mm -hmm. and I expressed uh, my dissatisfaction mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, we, do need, we do not need to, uh, to polarize this country. Did yes. you get a response from the president? No, 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 no one responded. Even the deputy president didn't. Yeah. So there was no follow-up on this particular matter. So you have officially formally written as Ford Kenya yes. raising concern about these utterances by the deputy president and you have raised this with the president and said we are concerned about what's going on but you never got a response I, we didn't get a response what did you make that of that uh uh probably a response will come you you have just talked about being patient mm -hmm. yes <laughs> <laughs> so i am <laughs> mm. yes do you uh, think this impeachment motion was then the response it, 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 you see, impeachment, this was, um, uh, to me, uh, to me, when the impeachment came, those are the reasons that I considered. 
yes. Mm. So to some extent, it was a response. Mm. Yes. Yes. You know, the, I've heard people say that he, when the deputy president spoke of shareholding, yes. he caused a great offense, and they said that what he said was morally wrong. Let me ask the question. You are member of parliament for Tongaran. Yes. The people you represent there, is it a settlement scheme? It's a settlement scheme. Okay, so people are sat somehow mixed, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes. But your <clears throat> primary interest is to represent those people. Correct. There are, how many constituencies are there in Bungoma County? Uh, nine constituencies. Precisely. Yes. Are they your primary concern, the other eight constituencies? Are the other eight <laughs> constituencies... <laughs> yes, to some extent, yes, because I'm the Secretary General of the party. No. Yes. As a member of parliament. As a member of parliament, I respond to those in Tongare. Precisely. Yes. Now... You, are, you have answered very well. Yes. But as Secretary General yes. of uh, of the party, yes. you are concerned with the other eight. Yes. Now, if you had not been a member of parliament for Tongaren, would you have been the Secretary General? I I can't know. Yeah. Yes. I'm simply trying to say that leadership starts from home. Yes. When you are able to provide the sort of leadership that people who are closest to you, who elect you... Yes. When it is clear, then it becomes easier for you to be given a much wider leadership of people. Yes. Now, I look at the deputy president and what he said. Mm -hmm. If he talks about shareholding, I think that man spoke a great truth. Yes. Because in any political contest, mm -hmm. if the part or the party or the group you belong to win, I do not expect that when you are determining who holds which position or who does what, that you are going to give due consideration as a first option to people who lost the election. Mm -hmm. You will give consideration to the people with whom you won the election. Mm -hmm. Is that not so? That, that is not true. Uh, you, okay. you, see, you see, I'm a member of parliament uh, for Tongaren. I won against uh, Dr. Eseli. Mm -hmm. Those who voted for me and those who did not f uh, vote for me, they are, ch uh, they are young people, they are children, they are students, deserve bursary irrespective of whether they voted for me, because they only have one MP. They don't have another one. Um, the, 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 the road infrastructure should pass through the polling centers and in regions, locations, which voted for me, plus those ones which didn't vote for me. Uh, when you look at uh, the electricity, which we are now supplying throughout Tongaren, it must go into households of those who voted for us and those who did not vote. And therefore, we, you represent those who voted for you because there is no any other parallel government for the one who voted and the one who did not vote. Once you become a president, you, you look after everybody equally. So that is one. Two. The deputy president came in, in Bungoma uh, with the president, and, and, and this one, everybody who is, uh, who is in Bungoma and who, who is on this radio can be able to, uh, to attest. And Moses Wetangula, who is the Speaker of the National Assembly, requested the president for a number of roads uh, to be done, a number of electricity programs, and quite a number of appointments to go to uh, the people who by that time had not received. And the deputy president who spoke immediately after Moses Wetangula said, and I remember that uh, uh, the, this country is a shareholding company and Bungoma has had it. Mepat sharing. And don't, don't ask for more. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Did he lie? <laughs> no. What was, he, what was he referring to? No. When he talks of shareholding, what, what was he referring, was he referring to? to? Maybe he, he was referring to that, you know, if we ask more, we are, we are asking for his shares. So <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> yes. let me take you to the county <laughs> yes. governments of mm. this country. Mm. And we look at the discussion that is normally had yeah. 
If the governor comes from one area of the county, yes, it is expected that his deputy will not come from that same area. Yes, yes. It is also expected that the speaker of the uh, county assembly will also not come from that area, but from a different area. Correct. Uh, so far, uh, am I getting this thing okay? Correct. Yes. Now, it is that understanding of a fair distribution of leadership positions within a county. Correct. And it's also understood that the second time around, there should be movement. People who, people, meaning yeah. the grouping who had not gotten certain positions, yeah. should also now vie. It is understood. Yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. It isn't written anywhere, but it is understood. Mm -hmm. Surely, is that not a shareholding? Uh, it, it isn't. It is, it's about, uh, you see, um, it's an ideology of leadership, fair distribution of resources. This is a human resource and, uh, uh, and material resources plus funds. It is not about shareholding. Uh, the moment we talk about shares, uh, definitely, we shall, we shall exclude those who did not... But, uh, but, but be fair. Yes, yes. Be fair, John. Yes, yes. Even <coughs> when the Deputy President was talking about shareholding, yes. it's about appointments. Yes. Not about distribution of these other resources. The mm -hmm. roads, even when he's stood up to speak after Speaker Wetangula had spoken. Mm -hmm. He did not say Mr. Pate Barubara. Mm -hmm. It's because Wetangula had said about appointments, mm -hmm. some jobs mm -hmm. that people should get. Mm -hmm. As we were saying, when it comes to jobs, my friend. Let me give you another, is, uh, let, let me give you another example so that you know <laughs> that what he meant was beyond appointments. Uh -huh. The MP for Mavoko, uh, early this year, there were a lot of demolitions in Mavoko. Yes. yes. And I was with the MP for Mavoko. Mm. And uh, he went to see the deputy president to intervene mm. so that they can stop the demolitions in order to allow people to get out their property, mm. uh, their assets so that they can maybe continue with the demolitions. And the, he met the deputy president, and then he asked the deputy president for support. And the deputy president, and I want you to ask the MP for Mavoko to come uh, here for, for this interview. And the deputy president told him that his shares are with the Kalonzo Msioka. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, so, you were so, being told to go and talk yes, to Kalonzo. Yeah. So, <coughs> so the MP for Mavoko <laughs> voted <laughs> voted the, the, for the impeachment <laughs> because he also has his own reasons, just like I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, member of Parliament for Tongaren Constituency. Yes, it happened to Yesu Anatoka and Endelea Kumuambea. <laughs> Before we go there, tell us about Yesu. Yesu. Ye Yesu is there. Honestly, is there. Okay. Now he's there. What? What is there? He's, he's, he's in Tongaren. One he's person. A, he's alive and well. He's, one, a, he's one alive and well. Yesu. Yes. E Yesu is there. Yesu of Tongaren. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine, and uh, he keeps on praying for this nation. That's why we are doing well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mwakilishi wa Yesu Bungeni. We're talking about the impeachment at the ins and outs of what was happening in parliament last week as we were watching it and he's confirming to us that many members of parliament were voting for various reasons not even among the 11 that were presented by um, Mwenge Mutuse in the impeachment motion. Mm -hmm. There were others that were for different other reasons. But all those reasons, were they reasons that you feel reached that threshold, the constitutional threshold to impeach a deputy president, or were they just political reasons of feeling that this person, Tamuyangu, Nayake, Simekatana? Uh, 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 a number of those... Um, uh, uh, Reasons advanced by uh, Mwenge Mutuse uh, were within the constitutional framework. And uh, uh, the legal department of uh, parliament had really looked at, at them critically. Uh, quite a number of reasons uh, were political. And personally, I... I, I I took some political decisions, uh, you know, uh, and and one of the, the 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 areas that we look at is the stability of our country. Mm. The statements that come from one person 
may uh, allude to th that, the thinking of that person. Mm. So, so personally, I, 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 th I thought that we may not be having a, a, a good person at, uh, at that top leadership. And so th those are, to me, to me I, I took a decision because of my interaction with the deputy president, as I had talked about, yeah. uh, his statements, which are not bringing cohesion within the country, his statements, which are exclusive, which, which bring disunity. Um, and, and so that was the decision I took. Yes. You, when we had gone on the break, you mentioned mm. an incident that helped <laughs> firm the, the, the position that you took. Yes. Uh, on a trip that you were with the deputy president. Yes. Uh, on a, an, a military chopper going to Katanga. Yes. I, I, I remember in February 2023, mm. I, we were going to Katanga. Mm. And uh, bo both the president and the deputy president. And I was privileged to be invited to join the... The, the team that was going to Katanga for a church service. And I sat with the deputy president in a military chopper next to, to, to him. And I told him, uh, since we were classmates in 1985 in the University of Nairobi, uh, can I be able to be the chairperson of the alumni of uh, members of parliament who joined? Because we are quite a number. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, in, the, uh, in, 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 in we are quite a number in mm -hmm. government. Uh, Lusaka was there. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Olo, who was here, mm -hmm. is my classmate. Mm -hmm. uh, Ekwe Thuro, um, uh, Nane, um, Kariako Tropico, Anna Amadi. We are quite many. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I told him, can I have be an uh, coordinate for you? Uh, he said, "Dear Mepito na wakati." So, <laughs> <laughs> and and then he put the the, the earphones or whatever, and okay. then we we went to Katanga. And from Katanga again, we didn't talk. Imagine, and we are classmates. Did you go ahead to coordinate? I could not coordinate something that someone does not, not want. Were yes. you doing it for him, or were you doing it for the class? I, I thought that we could be able uh, to coordinate uh, with the, you know with him being a patron, so that we could come together to look at how we can be able to help this nation. Okay, but then he he you poured, are serious people, all of you. Any anyone could be their patron. He poured. If cold you're water. honestly looking at it, uh, yes. as mm. this is an issue. All of us, this cohort of people who went through university around this year, yes. we can come together. We are looking at ourselves in the positions we hold in society. We can either give back, we can contribute, we can come together as a club. Yes. It doesn't need Regadi Yeah, but you, but, you, you, you could have made Ekwe Thuro the patron. But Rigiji is not Amadi. just a Rigijina. Or John Chikati. Yeah, he is not just a Rigijina name. Or leave the, the position of patron he, he's, open. He's, he's a deputy president. So when he says, Iyo kitu me pitu na wakati, and you know he's senior, he's sending a, a signal that you know you are, you are doing a wrong thing. So, so you know, again, again, mm. uh, I thought that, um, so when th this um, issue of impeachment came, I thought that uh, probably uh, from the word go, we had a wrong person. Mm. Yes. You, mm. as the Secretary General of Fort Kenya, yes. you're privy to many things that Fort Kenya, you know, uh, does. You must be privy to the coalition agreement between Fort Kenya and uh, candidate William Ruto. Yes, uh, not in detail, because mm. it was signed by my predecessor, Chris Wamalwa. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, so when I came in, uh, it, had, uh, it had already been signed. But you've seen it? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So what, is what the deputy president told the country true? Uh, what did he say? He said that among the agreements uh, with the Fort Kenya mm -hmm. was uh, you contribute to campaigning for mm -hmm. the coalition. Mm -hmm. And should the coalition win, then 30% of government positions would be allocated to Fort Kenya. Yes, that is what the agreement says. Okay. Yes. Have you gotten your share? Um, uh, we, we, I'm not in that, uh, in that, uh, arrangement of shareholding. Uh, it, it is an ideological thinking. It's a political thinking that, you know, once we, we, we get, uh, positions, these are the ones you will get, uh, uh, 30%. We've not gotten as, um. Uh, as a part, we've not gotten all the positions up to that percent mm. Be because we know that Kenya is not just for Ford Kenya, it's for all Kenyans. So, so we, we represent uh, 
we represent a position where there should be fair distribution of resources across the country. So as the Secretary General of the party, mm -hmm. are you pushing for the best of your party by saying this? We have contributed to Kenya Kwanzaa administration forming government. We have an agreement, a pre-election agreement, that should we get, this is what we shall get in return. Yes, we've been pushing for 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 for, for our, your thirty percent. Yeah, no, <laughs> yes, we've been pushing for <laughs> what was in the agreement uh, uh, for the thirty percent, but we we put in mind that uh, 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 the Kenya has the country is facing a critical resource shortage. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, the country is facing challenges in terms of financial uh, expenditures and and revenue and and so as we push we are also careful not to destroy this country mm. yes so what have you gotten so far 25 percent 26 five uh, probably probably uh, i have not been able to look at it mathematically but we have quite a number of uh, people uh, recommended by ford kenya who have been appointed to key positions mm. yeah where are they from mostly which part of Kenya? They are from all over the country. For example. Yes, yeah, so we are we have uh, we have people from Kakamega, we have one person who is the chair of the uh, the revenue authority, we have uh, the ambassador of uh, Senegal, uh, we, that one is from Bungoma. We have uh, um We've quite a number of people. If I knew you'll ask me, I'll have prepared a very long list mm. uh, for you to uh, to go through but, and appreciate. Is there anyone from uh, northeastern Kenya? Yes, we have Madam Nasra, who is uh, who is a treasurer of Ford Kenya, who is the chair of uh, the, the the one of the water bodies uh, in, in 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 northern Kenya. Yes, Tarda. Yes, yes. Is there anyone from the coast? Uh, yes, um, we have. Um, we I, I'll look whether we have. Probably Ruhu, um, uh, who is the chairman of Ford Kenya, mm. has some position in 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 in, in, um, in the government. And then Hadija Mustafa from Kenya, mm. uh, who is the director of elections mm. uh, in Ford Kenya, is holding another key position in one of the parastatals. And then uh, from Nyanza, we have Millicent Abudo, who is a director in Zoya Sugar Company. Mm. So it is well distributed. Mm. Among I, the officials of the party. Among the officials of the party. So officials of the party have gotten appointments in government. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Anybody who's not an official of the party who's been appointed to government? But you must be a key stakeholder because you ask whether the party got uh, 15%. Mm. So, yes. so you must be a shareholder in the party <laughs> to, be, to get appointment so, to the party. A stakeholder. <laughs> Case closed. A, a stakeholder. <laughs> you must be a stakeholder. <laughs> yes. <City. laughs> Yes, my point has been made. <laughs> yeah. No, you see, you see, there is a difference between shareholding and stakeholding. Same thing. <laughs> a Same stakeholder thing. is a person of interest. You, you know, Mushimewa. Yes, yes. If we were to look at mm. our lived reality as far as our politics is concerned, mm. I don't know why it is that people make this shareholding a bad word. Mm. Okay. The truth of the matter is, look at any political party, mm. any. Why don't we look at ODM? Yes. And when they shook hands and are now part of the broader government. Yes. The people who are appointed mm. as ministers. They are ODM stalwarts, are they mm. not? Mm -hmm. Each and every one of them is an ODM stalwart. Yeah. In fact, deputy party leaders and people who are chairman of ODM, mm. it, it, it's the same thing. Correct. Mm. You can't have a position and have given time and energy to a political party. Mm -hmm. When the spoils are being divided, it, it, you will expect to be given something because of the position you hold and what it is Correct. that you mean to the party. So, let me repeat. The idea of shareholding, in my mind, is not a swear word. It is not a bad thing. It is simply the reality of our politics. Let's look at the backyard of where the president comes from. How many people have been appointed to positions mm -hmm. from that backyard? Right. There are very many. It is out in the open. Mm -hmm. And how many people has the deputy governor who can lay claim to having been appointed? This is something that happens in any political dispensation. In fact, in others, it is expected that when a new government comes in, everybody who was in the previous government out. Mm. And new people come in. 
to, to me it is it is it, it was about the usage the yes. connotation the negativity in which the word shareholding was used mm -hmm. the, 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 the term shareholding itself has no problem but you know when you use it to exclude uh, you see so shareholding as a term has no problem you can use it even positively encourage people use it to unify the country but then uh, the deputy president used it negatively that with, if you are not within that bracket don't ask anything you know i yes. get the yes. impression i am getting from yes. what you've just said yes is that the deputy president seemed to have had a particular talent for offending people because everything that is referred to as political and which is not legal or constitutional has to do with an affront an offense that people felt had been committed they were disregarded they were spoken to badly they were not given due attention and it seems to have been widespread. You, you see, uh, we are having two people. Um, we have the president and the, the deputy, who is uh, the principal assistant of the president. Mm. One of, the, uh, one of the, 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 the things they should be involved in right now, the country is facing a lot of economic challenges. Mm. People require hope. People require uh, to be given some amount of hope and optimism mm. within these challenges. Mm. If people are facing challenges and then they come to you and you say, Shazako Ziko na Kalonzo, Shazako Ziko na Wetangula, then you are not giving those people hope. Okay? If we have a problem and then we come to you and, and, and we are saying, look, please help us with this, even when you don't have. Leave us with some amount of hope, okay? And and that is where how the deputy president failed. Now people are asking, in case anything happens and he becomes a president, how will this country be ruled? You see, that is the fear. That is the fear. Anything can happen to the current president, although the law says you should not imagine it. But anything can happen. There's and nothing then, in the law that says we should not imagine it. Yes. Nowhere. Nowhere. No, 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 no. no. That one <laughs> was <laughs> the time when Jomo Kenyatta was president. <laughs> yes, yes. The law does not stop <laughs> us from imagining okay, so, the death of a president. Okay. Because he will die at some yes, point. Yes, But this is what... You will yeah, die, yeah. I will die, fact, Eric will die. In fact, the constitution imagines it. Yes, And yes, says... yes. In the event, one of the ways in which we can have a vacancy in the office of the president yes, yes. is the death of the president. Yes. Yes. Now, suppose that happens, mm. and then someone who palkanizes the country comes to be the president, mm. and then you go to him, and then you say, "Look, uh, I would like to have even water." Then he tells you, "Wapishi uh, azako." <laughs> yes. 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 Nani alikuambia? Nani alikuambia Yesu? Yesu azaliwa tuangareni. It's very interesting. Yes. Parliament. Yes. By um, MPs going across the constituency and holding those public hearings. MPs were saying that we have to dispense with this matter so that we can get back to matters that really affect Kenyans. So Parliament, the National Assembly, has dispensed with that matter. Now it's your lawyers and Mwenge Mutuse who will go to the Senate and take that matter forward. Is the National Assembly now back to doing the job that really affects Kenyans? Yes, we, we finished that uh, um, issue on Tuesday. Uh, by around 10 p.m. Uh, by Wednesday, we were, we were able to the normal motions of Parliament. Parliament is working as usual. The committees are running as usual. On uh, Friday, we, I attended the Budget Committee uh, to review uh, budget uh, issues. And um, on Tuesday, we go back to our normal business. Yes, mm. yes. So is, you're a member of the Budget Committee. Yes. And this is a very important committee of uh, the National Assembly. Right. Because um, as we look at uh, how the government is spending, you have to be very, very sure that every shilling is going towards as much as possible service delivery. Yeah. So that Kenyans get the service that they deserve, that they are paying taxes for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you tell the country today that as far as you're concerned, looking at the reports that come to you from the control of budget 
looking at the reports that come from the Auditor General, looking at the reports that come to you from the National Treasury, that we are properly utilizing all the shilling that we have. Yes, the, the, the shilling we have um, at the moment is probably being utilized um, from the from the, 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 the reports um, that, that, that we evaluate. Uh, the budget committee is there to receive um, proposals from the Treasury, from Parliament, and then appropriate those, uh, those monies uh, to various departments, allocate the money to, for, for, for usage in various departments. What the budget committee does not do, because it is not within its purview, is the, 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 the evaluation uh, of the usage, which is within another uh, another committee within Parliament, mm. uh, the Public Accounts Committee. Mm. So ours is to receive uh, the proposals and then allocate. But so far, uh, from what I from what I know, is that usage of public money mm. uh, is is not worse. It is it is within the allowed parameters. Who rep who rep received the reports that come from the National Treasury, the periodic reports? Um, as we receive proposals on, on utilization of budget, uh, on because we have one the the, the we, we have one the auditor general we have the control of budget and then the other side we have the public accounts committee mm -hmm. in parliament. Yes, yes, and we have the yes. national the national treasury. Yes, should be uh, coming back to parliament every so often. Yes, with how it's utilizing the money. Correct, right? correct. Is that not coming to the committee on budget? We do not uh, really evaluate okay. uh, the. We do not really evaluate on how the money is being ut mm. utilized. Mm. But then we look at the papers and then we we look at the documents and then we evaluate. We assess okay. and say we gave you this last year, for example. Why are you asking? Uh, why are you asking for more? Right. What has this uh, been used? Right. We we normally ask. Right. Yes. We are right now in the budget making cycle. Yes. For the next one financial yes. year. Yeah. And if you look back into the last uh, budgets. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. Into what the national treasury has come and proposed by uh, February. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of the budget policy statement. Yes. And by the time they come with the budget uh, in June. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the supplementary budgets in September. Correct. Supplementary, another supplementary budget around April. Yes. It, there's always a huge variation. Mm -hmm. What you initially approve for them to spend, mm -hmm. but as well as they end up spending, there's a variation and where the money goes to, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this is where many people say that, you know, we end up not getting, you know, bang for our back mm -hmm. because money that was earmarked for a certain project, for example, those roads in Bungoma mm. that uh, Speaker Wetangelo was talking about, mm. I'm sure they've appeared somewhere in a budget before. Yes. Why don't they end up getting implemented? Mm -hmm. S sometimes we budget for, uh, for activities uh, within our country, but then when it comes to implementation, the money is not available. Um, sometimes we do that. Uh, uh, we, we, we do that. Probably we we budget hoping that some donor somewhere, some financial will support our, our country's activities. Or we budget knowing that revenue will be generated, will be uh, collected and then uh, dispersed through the national treasury. But that reven the target revenue is not arrived. And so we have various reasons why we may budget for certain activities and in the course of uh, implementation, they are not done, they are not executed and they are not delivered because, you know, the, 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 the revenue that has been generated is not uh, in consonant with the, with the expenditure mm -hmm. that is supposed to be incurred. Yeah, we yes. always end up spending what we had budgeted for or you don't raise what you are targeted to raise. Be because when you come to uh, uh, the revenue raising, we, we do not only rely on the internal revenues raised. We also rely on uh, donor funding. We rely on financing. Okay. And we rely on P uh, P uh, PPPs, uh, private partnership programs. And so um, all that are captured within the budget framework. Uh, so uh, that is one reason why many projects or quite a number of projects may be within the budget framework, but they are not uh, implemented okay. because the revenues have not been raised. Two, we may have certain contingencies along the way, 
certain emergencies and certain um, situations. For example, in 2022, we had a very uh, prolonged drought, okay? And then followed uh, recently by a very prolong a prolonged situation of floods, okay? Which we had not been budgeted for because it's a contingency. Or certain amount of disease that can hit the country. So those are some of the things that can consume huge amounts of money, but they were not within the budget. And therefore, they forced the, 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 the government to uh, re, re, reallocate the funding uh, to these situations. Mm. Yes. Currently, the many issues that are facing Kenyans, and I'm sure even the people of Tongaren, mm. some people who appeared in the public uh, participation for the impeachment of the deputy president Ye yes. must have raised it. Uh -huh. Issue of healthcare, yes. access to healthcare, yeah. with the rollout of SHA, yeah. the issue of school right. and children not accessing school, bursary and the expenses of schools. Mm. You know, all these are the issues. These are the issues that are really hurting Kenyans, mm. that Kenyans care about. Is Parliament aware? that these are the issues that Kenyans care about? We, we are quite aware because we interact with people uh, on, uh, on a daily basis, uh, yes. But what I can tell you, uh, my brother, is that transition uh, from, one, uh, from one thing to the other uh, is always takes time and even to adjust. Uh, I attended the, the, the form uh, four, six, uh, f uh, three education. Mm -hmm. You came in for 844, eight, four, four. okay? Uh, 844 was good because mulipembelezo na maziwa, na moi, muna kunyo, muna kunyo kidogo, muna muka kubali. Hii ingina ijakuja na maziwa, hii CBC. Ijashika. <laughs> so, so, uh, so transition is always uh, uh, um, something that takes time. It takes time to be appreciated. It takes time to be adopted. Mm. I am not an expert in the health sector, but transiting from uh, uh, the the universal health care uh, to share uh, and shift has, has has taken a lot of time, and uh, acceptance is somehow difficult. But it is my prayer and hope that uh, things will be okay so that our people can get the health service. When you look at experts who studied the do, two models, uh, they say the current model is the best. And as I said, I'm not an expert. And so we hope that uh, this transition can be uh, quickly uh, done so that our people can benefit from healthcare. When you come to uh, the funding model, of for higher education from help loan to the current model uh, we uh, we see that it has a lot of challenges okay a lot of challenges and the president has set already a committee to review uh, the, the the snags within the, 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 the that, that that arrangement so the goodwill is there uh, we don't do things uh, for for the wrong we always do it for the better of the society. And that is uh, my hope that both in education and in healthcare, things can improve. Mm. Yes. So far, are you happy with the transition? Uh, example, in just SHA? Uh, I'm, 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 I can't say I'm happy uh, or I can't say I'm not happy because it has not yet uh, fully succeeded. Uh, we still have quite a number of things that need to be uh, realigned. And I think the minister in charge of health uh, with, the, with the stakeholders there are working hard uh, to ensure that uh, it works. Okay. Yes. Mashimo, thank you very much for joining us. Today. Yes. yes Come you. again soon. Yes. Yep. John Chikati is the MP for Tongaren Constituency, Secretary yes. General of uh, Ford Kenya. He's been our guest for this hour. And Asalimia Yesu Sana. Asante. Yesu normally anasema Amina. But thank you so much, Asante Nisana. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day.